Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture. As part of this Corn School episode, we are focusing on herbicide strategies, weed control, lessons learned in dry conditions, even drought. We head to a corn plot just outside Winkler, Manitoba, joined by Harold Brown of BASF. Yes, it has been, even though we maybe want to forget about it at times, an exceptionally dry year. We've had a bit of a reprieve in that with some recent moisture, but it has still been an exceptionally uh, dry year this season. And during a dry year like that, uh, we feel it's still incredibly important to consider uh, weed management. In a dry year, you're thinking about different ways to maybe cut back on your inputs. But uh, I really, and we really feel it's important to manage your weeds and particularly in crops like corn and soybeans that are quite sensitive to competition. So corn, as you can see behind me here, it's tasseled out. It's a heat-loving crop. It really does thrive under the warm conditions we've had this summer. But what it doesn't particularly like is uh, competition and particularly for moisture and nutrients. And when we have competition from weeds in the crop, it's taking away the moisture. And this year that has been a real, real scarce resource. So how we want to manage this is thinking about uh, removing those weeds early. And there's been studies done, many studies done. Uh, Sycamore's work from Eastern Canada talked about you know, 50% yield reduction from the competition from weeds early in the season. We have a critical weed-free period that we want to protect the crop, and that's up to the six-leaf stage in corn. So it starts really right at the beginning with applying some pre-emergent uh, products with uh, residual uh, characteristics. So you control weeds that are present at that time but also will be in the soil and control uh, suppress weeds over the next while until you can get in with your in-season herbicide application. And then you can come in with a timely in-season application and control the rest of those weeds. Some people may also be wondering in exceptionally dry conditions, should you be using a residual herbicide? Will it actually work? And number of the products that we use you apply it to the soil and they will get activated once you get sufficient rainfall and so it is still worthwhile even in a dry year like we've had and that's what we can see in this plot behind you we do have three at least three different treatments here and it's quite noticeable the the difference that weed competition that that competition for the moisture in the soil has made on the plant right that is very true and we have uh, the first plot you'll look at is an untreated, completely untreated weedy check and we have an abundance of weeds in this uh, field to challenge uh, the herbicides that we were applying and following that we have a non-residual uh, system with glyphosate pre-emergent followed by glyphosate in crop and then we also look at a, a, a treatment where we have pre-emergent uh, residual with glyphosate and then followed in season with uh, a herbicide application to clean up. And there are definite differences there that you will see, particularly not just uh, the weed control, you'll see that with the untreated, uh, the glyphosate glyphosate, you can still see weeds under the canopy and then the residual benefit of the residual treatment clean under the canopy. But you'll also look at the effect on the corn. You'll look at the treatment right beside me here is the residual prior to uh, emergence. And it is the tallest, most robust looking corn, healthiest looking corn here. And as you look at the other plots, shorter, 
um, when we had a lot of heat here you could see the onion leaves how stressed the other treatments were yeah right now we're blessed with a little bit of cooler temperature definitely still some wind but uh, yes. not as hot today showing that onion leafing that was quite quite evident earlier in the season here earlier in the season that's right yeah we've been monitoring this site a lot over the last several months and yes the heat and dry conditions really did have an effect on those treatments so looking ahead to to next year how do growers use this as part of their planning process for for the next growing season so you think about this growing season the benefit of those pre-emergence herbicides uh, preventing weeds from going to seed for next year but if you're thinking ahead to your corn rotation corn in your rotation this is an excellent opportunity because we have a wide range of herbicides that you can can use with a wide range of uh, modes of action and we talk about uh, multiple modes of effective action so you can utilize groups 5 14 15 27 so along with your glyphosate uh, and you would have multiple modes that are effective on the same weed some of those critical weeds for example uh, glyphosate resistant kochia is something that's top of line these days even volunteer canola that is resistant to different groups other challenging weeds water hemp is one that uh, just recently we found another population in manitoba of water hemp and most of that is glyphosate resistant so these are all weeds we need to stay ahead of so you can utilize those uh, multiple modes of action pre-emergent uh, plan for that next year even though it's been dry you know that it will provide that benefit for the corn crop that you're growing and for future crops after that yeah and that's also just to wrap it up here harold that's also where corn provides this opportunity to diversify our chemistry mix that's right so with corn you can utilize those multiple modes of action and take advantage of that uh, for the weed control uh, throughout the season and the advantages um, in the end with yield and uh, clean fields yeah all right thanks for your time harold thank you very much it was great